contact. And um, I just want to very want to say a big thank you to Emmanuel and his team because, I mean, it's important to have these kind of sessions so that we can at least talk about the industry and the things that are going on. Um, secondly, I also just want to... Okay. Secondly, I just want to also thank all the different solution providers that have showcased such wonderful solutions because it's always interesting to see the kind of innovations that are out there, particularly in a market like Nigeria where mobile money is just beginning to pick up. So I say thank you to everybody that has presented. Um, a lot of very interesting things happening. Um, what I, I want to do over the next um, 15 minutes is just to look at how we can use, and you can, from the title is Effectively Driving Mobile Money Adoption, Lessons from Mobile Banking. Because today, if you look at the Nigerian environment, I mean, if there is any doubt that the mobile money opportunity is there and is real, I think the last two days I've clarified that. So the opportunity is there. The technology is there. I mean, we've seen everything from radio transmitters to NFC to fingerprint scanners. But what is the issue? You know, with the market, the clear demand there and the technology there, we should probably have 100 million mobile money users in Nigeria today. I mean, so where is the missing link? Where, where is the gap? And the more we thought about it, you know, it became apparent that perhaps there's a, there's a need for us to step back and to say, you know, what lessons have we learned from mobile banking? And how can we use that to influence mobile money? So what I'm going to just be talking about is tied around that. And I took this um, quote from Malcolm Gladwell that said, we learn by example and by direct experience because there are real limits to the adequacy of verbal instructions. And it's, it's important to know that each transact, one of the things that set us apart in the market today is that we've actually been in the mobile payment space a lot longer than a lot of the players around today. So we want to believe that there is some value that that experience can bring in understanding where mobile money is going, particularly in a market like Nigeria where, and it was interesting to know that a lot of the places in Africa where mobile money has really taken off, you've had that strong push from the government. Is that our government is using it to pay salaries, or government is using it to disburse subsidies, or something, but the government is playing a major part. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, not so much is happening within, within that space. So, um, for us, it was interesting to say, okay, if we, we hope we'll get the government focus, but even if we don't get that, how is mobile money likely to evolve, leveraging on the experiences we've had on the mobile banking space? So what I'm going to do is just very briefly share some background about e-transact, then talk about some, share some data we gathered. Recently, we did some survey on our mobile banking user base. So even just try to understand that, okay, what are, these, what are the trends in the adoption of mobile banking, like I said, and how can that help us better understand where mobile money is going to? Then, you know, try to, what I also try to do is to pick, pick some lessons that we can learn from there. Then, I don't know, maybe in the session, we can see if there are any questions that we can answer. So just a quick background on e-transact. We founded in 2003, and even before mobile payments became sexy in Nigeria, e-transact already had the vision to be a leading global provider of mobile transaction services, leveraging on our mobile switching platform. So even though the business started in 2003, today we've taken it to um, six other countries. The Nigerian business is quoted on the stock exchange, and today we currently provide the mobile banking solutions for the majority of the banks that have functional mobile banking services. Not just in Nigeria, but in other jurisdictions like in Ghana and several other places. It's also important to note that the mobile banking we've also deployed does not just serve your typical big commercial banks. We've also designed and implemented mobile banking solutions for microfinance banks as well, as well as regional banks in Nigeria today. So there, there is some experience that we can bring to the table. Now what I just wanted to show with this slide, that today, depending on who you talk to, and I alluded to this point earlier, 
uh, there are different stories about mobile money in Nigeria today. So on the one hand, um, if you talk to the regulators, they'll tell you mobile money has not really performed. I mean, the expectations were high. We thought that the need was there, like I said, the need was there, the technology is available, was holding it back. But today we have not really seen the numbers that we expected. If you talk to the mobile money operators, then it's another story. Uh, you know, they'll tell you to be patient. After all, it's a new technology. It takes time and all that. If you talk to the agents, they're asking you mobile money, yes, but why? You know, why, why do I want to do this business? And I think one of the speakers alluded to that about the use cases. You know, you need to be able to show somebody very clearly, especially in Nigeria, why it should get involved. And you ask the users about mobile money and they say, what? <laughs> what's, what's mobile money? You know, so the bottom line is that there's still a lot to be done. Yes, the demand is there. Yes, the technology is there. But we're not seeing the adoption. So we need to step back and say, what are we doing wrong? You know, and we believe that mobile banking can help shed some light. Now, I just want to, the way we see it, at least in e transact we always like to distinguish between mobile banking and mobile money. Now, if you look at today, some of the major challenges facing mobile money is one, that of brand awareness. It's still a major issue for a lot of the operators. You know, you call a lot of the names, like pocket money, let me use myself, and you know, a lot of the people don't really know the brand. Now, this is different from mobile banking because it's being deployed by banks that they know. So the issue is not really there, at least as it relates to brand recognition. Then you look at the issue of cash in as a limitation because in Nigeria today, if you ask any mobile money operator, one of the key issues is getting cash into the wallet. Now, in mobile banking, you don't have the issue because the money is already in, in the wallet. Then you have the low level of education that the customer base, you know, you talk about the unbanked, they are very skeptical because they really don't have enough information. So you find that when you're trying to sell mobile money to them, there's a lot of going back and forth. But with the mobile banking customer, it's relatively easy because he's aware, he appreciates um, technology and the convenience it can give him and all that. So we think that by the time you begin to drive awareness in mobile money, you begin to drive um, the issue of cashing, you begin to um, remove all the skepticism that is associated with it today, then you're actually turning towards mobile banking. Um, and we see that today, in short, today some of the banks in Nigeria actually run their mobile banking from their mobile money platform. And it's essentially that convergence has already happened. So for us, it's okay looking back and saying, okay, so what lessons can we learn from mobile banking? And we did a survey of our existing mobile banking customer base. And, you know, first, what we wanted to understand was the current user profile. So who uses mobile banking in Nigeria today? So we find out that almost 90% of the people that use mobile banking are between ages 31 to 50. So it's the normal young, I mean, relatively young people. You look at the gender distribution, they are mostly male. You look at their employment status, uh, not so much. A lot of them are employed, some are self-employed. But what that underscores for me are, is that these are people that are upwardly mobile. You know, even if they don't have a job in terms of formal employment, but they are doing something, and that connotes some level of intelligence. Then you look at the income side again, um, um, evenly spread between those that earn significantly above 150,000, then those that also earn 50,000 in that bracket. Then look at the product awareness. So how did the people today learn about mobile banking? Because again, today we are pushing mobile money, we are trying to create awareness. It's interesting to know people that adopted mobile banking, how they got to know about it. And interestingly, 47% of those surveys said it was at the bank branch. So even though you know, a lot of the banks have billboards, they send SMS, they send all those messages, it's really that personal interaction in the bank branch that really got people on board. Because again, this is financial services. You know, you're not just going to hear, um, see a billboard and decide to put your money somewhere. So that, again, was very striking. Then, of course, you look at the phone type. We also find out that a lot of people that use mobile banking today actually have smartphones. So you have your Android being the most, the most common there. Then you also have others like your Blackberry and the rest. Again, part of that has to do with the fact that today, certain brands of phones that have come into the market have radically crashed the price of smartphones. And the thinking is that it's going to get 
even lower. Then we looked at duration. Again, it's interesting to know that a lot of the people that had mobile banking have had it for about two years. So they've you know, used it for quite a while. And for most people, the value proposition there was convenience. And we'll see this a bit later in terms of what they actually use it for. So yes, there are aspects that has to do with you know, it being secure or it being easy to use or user friendly. The case for USSD and all that. But for most people, it's still about that convenience, as in even for mobile banking. Now, when we ask the people that, okay, so what do you use mobile banking for? We found out that, because there's been an argument also that, you know, is Nigeria going to follow the same remittance kind of um, pattern like we saw in Kenya and the other places? And some people have argued that, no, that Nigeria is essentially a bill payment environment and all that. But what we see here is funds transfer is actually the highest use case for a lot of the people that have mobile banking today. Um, of course, that is followed very closely by airtime top-up, then you have bill payment. But again, for me, when I saw this, it was just the clear case that, okay, yes, funds transfer, remittance is relevant, but it's how to build, um, it's the way we get it done that is critical. We looked at the profile of where the people currently send money to, and it was interesting to know that 77% actually send money to people in the city. Uh, interestingly, somebody made the joke like that the difference between the Nigerians and the Kenyans is that when we come to the urban areas, we carry our families with us. So again, it's possible that that's why we saw those kind of numbers. Another thing that we also found out was that was it fit with other electronic channels? Because in each transact, one of the things we look at is an overall payment architecture that doesn't seek to place one payment channel over the other. The thinking is that every payment channel has a place to play, has a role to play. So web has a role to play, POS has a role to play, mobile banking has a role to play, mobile money has a role to play. So if you see today, most of the people that have mobile banking, for example, actually also have a debit card. So we ask them that, okay, you have mobile banking, you have a debit card, so what do you use each for? And what came out was that the people that had a debit card mostly used it for withdrawals, you know, for um, POS transactions, for internet banking, and online shopping. Whereas the people that were using mobile banking were using it more for airtime top-up bill payments. So you see the difference. People that use mobile banking tended to use it for remote transactions, transactions that they don't need to be there at all. But whereas people that had cards used it for more of um, proximity transaction where they're actually at the merchant locations. So for us, that was quite interesting to note. Uh, in terms of awareness, because we've always operated with the philosophy that, again, it is the people that adopt new technologies are the people that are upwardly mobile and all that. And so when we ask the people that already have mobile banking, have you heard about mobile money? You know, it was interesting to see that 74% of them said yes. They had actually heard about mobile money. Um, and 60% of them actually understand the difference between mobile banking and mobile money. Although when we now ask them if they had a mobile money account, uh, most of them didn't have at 53%. Now, in terms of, okay, for those that had trans accounts, what they even used it for, airtime purchase, funds transfer, and bill payments also ranked as top. So you see, the same pattern that we saw with uh, mobile banking also applies. So for us, having looked at this, there were seven key lessons that came to mind. The first was that, like with other tech products, mobile banking was adopted first by young male, upwardly mobile individuals. And you see this from every other product, from Blackberries to Facebook to every other tech product. That pattern seems to be con consistent. And we think that in talking about mobile money, at least without that, push of say, okay, maybe there's a government intervention that more or less forces people to use mobile money. We might see the same pattern if mobile money is to move organically. The second point we noticed there that face-to-face -face contact was the most effective medium of driving adoption for mobile banking. So that role of a human being doing the conversing. I mean, these are people that are literate, they are upwardly mobile, but it still took somebody sitting them down and saying, this is the value in this thing for them to adopt it. So we think, again, that is something to note. Then the third point there we see is that 
the Android platform, when you talk about mobile payment applications, is one of the most common platforms that runs on phones. So it's important to also take that into consideration as we begin to look at how to drive mobile money. The fourth thing, the fourth thing there I already alluded to before is that convenience was the, the strongest value propositions for people that adopted mobile banking. So for them, it's being able to be at home and pay my DSTV, you know, or my um, PACN or, or whatever bill it is. Then five, remittance, which is actually funds transfer, is the highest use case for mobile banking users. So yes, airtime is closed, yes, bill payment is closed, but there's still a remittance game there somewhere. Then the sixth lesson there is that mobile banking actually complements rather than complete, com competes with other electronic banking channels. Again, that's something to note that even it's possible to have mobile money, but that same person also has other channels. So in thinking about how we design mobile money, it's important to be able to at some point integrate these different channels because it's not really a question of do I have this or do I have this, but more of a synergy of both. Then finally, mobile banking users are already aware of mobile money and understand its unique value proposition. So for us, when we did this survey, part of what we took out of it was, and we think this is critical for all mobile money operators, is to really begin to think that, you know, who am I really targeting? You know, knowing that this is the pattern that mobile banking has followed. Then what marketing mediums are most appropriate? You know, do I really want to be doing billboards or radios versus having more of a one-on-one -on -one contact? Um, what product design consideration um, do, do I need to be thinking about? Then what transaction sets do I need to emphasize? We think these are some of the key things that, that we need to be thinking about in talking about mobile money adoption in Nigeria. Thank you very much.